Spontaneously, a group of four friends decided, inspired by an instinct for adventurism, and penetrated deeply into the core of the infamous Whispering Woods. The story of an abandoned cabin seemed to warp and become a dark reality, hidden deep within its depths, filled the air with whispers, until that night. The woods welcomed us with an eerie silence, a stark contrast to the lively banter that filled our small group. Jack, who never left his camera on standby and was always prepared to shoot, Sarah, the doubter, and Alex, whose interest in everything supernatural seemed to be never-ending, all of us being between excitement and fear, went deeper into the forest as the shadows were lengthening and the path under our feet started to be less noticeable. Approaching the cabin felt like stepping into another world, one in which the battered structure had been swallowed by the surrounding wilderness and stood there as evidence for all the tales that, until then, had always been waved off. The door was creaking on its hinges, and the last tinny-voiced complaint came from behind as we made our entry into what would become our campsite for the night. Inside, the air was thick with the scent of mold and decay. The scene, of course, had not budged. The half-set table, the book left open as though any minute the one reading it would return. And children's pictures on the floor, their bright colors peculiarly dark, so they lay in that unfriendly light. And as the outside was now filled with its darkness, it seemed that some kind of growing darkness was taking place inside, now rooting in our hearts, an isolation in the cabin, looking one of those attractive possibilities. But now, nothing less than a trap. When the murmurs started, faint, indecipherable, we tried to console ourselves that they were none other than the wind. But at night, this murmur deepened to an intensity that it used to have by day, until there were very distinct voices calling us or calling each other, or maybe calling something else. Seeking a distraction, we turned our attention to the book we had found. On aged, yellowed pages was a story not of our seeking, but that of a diary, a record of someone's life within these very walls. Innocently enough, the entries began. A family, with high hopes for their fresh start, moved into the cabin. However, reading further in, the tone changes from very sunny and wonderful pictures the author leads in a feeling of oppression, from seeing shadows move in the corner of your eyes to whispers that become stronger from night to night, and, lastly, an entry that put a scare into me. The woods whisper truths we are not meant to hear. We are leaving before it's too late. The book fell silent, but the rest of the pages lay blank, just as it seemed the writer had put them down when she took up her warning and fled. The air in the cabin grew oppressively thick. It suffocated one. Now, that courage, though playful before, could never have been there. It was gone, replaced by a fear that could be described as primal. Not alone. That was clear now by the many whispers. They were around us, inside the cabin, every voice a thread in the tapestry of terror. Our night was spent in a vigil, too afraid to sleep, too mesmerized by the horror of our situation to consider leaving. The cabin, the woods, seemed to close in on us, a living entity aware of our presence and displeased by it. When finally dawn came, it was to an opening out from the grip of night. We left the cabin in silence and every step away lifted the weight settled onto our chests. The light of day no longer made the forest take on some malevolent being. It was just a forest and the cabin just a cabin. But that experience stayed shadowing into our friendship. We rarely ever discussed that night, almost as though bringing it up would empower the fear. But it lay there, a shared memory that bonded us in mutual silent agreement never to go back to the whispering woods. At the end, we asked more questions than we had answers for in this foray into the unknown. Who? What had been the voices? to see them back in the cabin. The truth, that which so few fools care to listen to, is that it is kept in secret within the very heart of the woods. It is whispered to the wind. It certainly was an adventure in the whispering woods, a real journey into fear, into such an experience that questions and challenges not only the world itself, but also our place in it. It's a story that murmurs to me in the dimness of the night, chilling evidence of when the borders had grown dim between legend and reality, dimming us for eternity.